Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. So, in this lecture we will see a statistically secure verifiable secret sharing scheme uh, with the condition t less than n over 2. So, <coughs> for simplicity we will assume that the number of parties is exactly 2 times the threshold t plus 1. Uh, this is the smallest value of n satisfying the condition t less than n over 2 and remember that t less than n over 2 is the optimal resilience bound for statistically secure multiparty computation. The sharing phase protocol of this VSS scheme generates a 2D secret sharing of the dealer's secret with IC signatures in a verifiable fashion. So, if the dealer is honest then it the privacy of the dealer's secret will be maintained and the verifiability ensures that even if the dealer is corrupt at the end of the sharing phase protocol there is some value, some secret which the dealer has secret shared and which has been secret shared in a 2D secret shared fashion with IC signatures. So, just to recap what exactly is a 2D secret sharing of a value with IC signatures. So, a value S is said to be 2D secret shared with IC signatures. If you have a set of primary shares lying on a T degree polynomial with the ith party holding the ith share and each share which is the primary share is further secret shared through a T degree polynomial or some is secret shared and the shares for this primary share S i are called as the secondary shares. So, P 1 will have a share S i S 1 i sorry yeah so P sorry P 1 will have a share S i 1 for the primary share S i P 2 will have the of secondary share S i 2 for the primary share S i. The jth party will have a secondary share S i j for the primary share S i and the nth party will have a secondary share S i n for the primary share S i. So, that is why it is called 2D secret sharing because you have the secret being shared in one dimension uh, through some is secret sharing and in the other dimension each some is share is for the sum is shared. We also have IC signatures on the secondary shares available. So, if I consider the ith party, it will have the full vector of secondary shares of S i. So, it has not only the primary share S i, the party P i will also have the secondary shares S i 1, S i 2, S i i, S i j, S i n and they will be individually IC signed by the respective secondary shareholder. So, the secondary share S i 1 will be IC signed with by will be IC signed by party P 1. The i th secondary share will be IC signed with uh, will be IC signed by the i th party P i. The j th secondary share will be IC signed by the party P j and the n th secondary share will be IC signed by the party P n. So, that is the entire structure, entire structure of inform data structure of information which will be generated by this statistical verifiable secret sharing scheme. I, I would also like to stress that in the in one of our earlier lectures we had seen that if you have a value edge which is secret shared which is 2D secret shared with IC signatures then we can robustly reconstruct it. And also recall that we will be using this notations for representing a 2D secret sharing of any value with IC signatures. So, here is the sharing phase protocol. So, the dealer will have some value S from a finite field F which it would like to secret share and the idea here will be similar to our perfectly secure verifiable secret sharing scheme where dealer will first pick a summary secret a summary sharing polynomial which is a t degree polynomial a random t degree polynomial whose constant term is the secret s. And to prove that it is secret sharing the secret s in a consistent way uh, what dealer is going to do is it is going to embed this summary secret sharing polynomial f of x in a random t degree bivariate polynomial f of x y. To pick this random t degree bivariate polynomials, the dealer will additionally pick t random 
univariate polynomials each of degree t and then using the summit sharing polynomial and the additional t univariate polynomials it interpolates this bivariate polynomial f of x y. The constant term of this bivariate polynomial will be the dealer secret and rest of the coefficients of this bivariate polynomial will be random. Now, as we have done in the perfectly secure VSS, the ith party will be provided the ith row and the ith column polynomial on this bivariate polynomial. But now since we are in the statistical world and since we are now working with the condition n being 2t plus 1, we are no longer in the setting where n is at least 3t plus 1. So, that is why to ensure robustness in the protocol, uh, what dealer is going to do is it is going to IC sign all the individual points on the ith row and ith column polynomial before giving those row and column polynomial to the ith party. So, if you imagine this n cross n matrix of values, matrix of points on the bivariate polynomial, then the ith party will be getting the ith row polynomial in the form of these points namely the ith row which are the points on the ith row and all these points are distinct points on the bivariate polynomial f of x y and at the same time the values along the ith column will be given to the ith party. And dealer will also individually IC sign these points. Okay. So, each point on IC signed by the dealer. This is to ensure that later if there are any disputes and if PI wants to claim anything regarding the values which it has got from the dealer, it can publicly show the IC signature of the dealer on those points and everyone can then verify the claim of the ith party if there are any disputes in the future rounds. In the same way, the distinct points on the ith column are also IC signed by the dealer. So, this notation here denotes that these points are IC signed and how they would have been IC signed by running an instance of the ICP which we had discussed in our earlier lecture. Now, once dealer has distributed the ith signed row and column polynomial to the ith party and this we, it will be doing for each individual party. The rest of the protocol involves interaction among the parties to verify whether dealer has distributed consistent polynomials to the honest parties. Because if it is guaranteed that dealer has distributed consistent polynomials to all the honest parties, since we have at least t plus 1 honest parties in the system, it will be guaranteed that the row and column polynomials which those honest parties have received actually constitute distinct row and column polynomials on a unique t degree bivariate polynomial and this comes because of the pairwise consistency lemma. Okay. So, now let us see the remaining rounds of the protocol, how exactly the pairwise consistency check happens and how the disputes are resolved and so on. So, the first thing which every party PI does is the following. So, PI would be receiving the points on the supposedly ith row polynomial and the points on the supposedly ith column polynomial of dealer's bivariate polynomial. So, those points should lie individually on t degree polynomials, but if P i finds that the row and column polynomial that it has received are not t degree polynomials, then it publicly complains namely by broadcasting the points that it has received on its row and column polynomials along with the signatures, along with the signature of the dealer. And now everyone can verify whether <coughs> the signatures are correct and if the signatures are correct, correct and indeed if the points revealed by the ith party uh, does not lie on t degree row or t degree column polynomial, then everyone will conclude that dealer is corrupt and they will discard the dealer and stop the protocol there itself and it will take, they will take some default value s 
on the behalf of the dealer. So, it is easy to see that if the dealer is honest, it will not be discarded with very high probability because an honest PI will never complain and against an honest dealer. So, if the dealer is honest, a potentially corrupt PI might try to unnecessarily complain against the dealer and it may try to reveal incorrect points and there is a non-zero error probability that it is successfully able to forge dealer's IC signatures on the points which dealer has not given to the ith party, in which case the parties may end up discarding an honest dealer. But the probability that a corrupt PI can forge honest dealer's signature on points which have not been provided by the dealer to the ith party is very, very negligible. So, if at all a dealer is discarded because of this check, then it is guaranteed with very high probability that the dealer is corrupt. Now, <coughs> if the dealer is not discarded and it is every party has locally checked that the row and column polynomials which they have received are t degree polynomials, then they go ahead with the pairwise consistency check where every pair of parties exchange the supposedly common points on their respective polynomials. But now, they also put their IC signatures on the common points. This is because looking ahead, we want to generate a 2D secret sharing of dealer secret with IC signatures, right. So, the pairwise consistency test is very similar to what we have what we had done for perfectly secure protocols except that in the perfect secure protocol the pairwise consistency check does not involve any kind of signatures, but since we are in the statistical world and we are working with the resilience n equal to 2 t plus 1 and we want to generate 2 d secret sharing with IC signatures as part of the pairwise consistency test. Uh, the parties also put their individual IC signature, they, they give IC signatures on the supposedly common points. So, for instance, <coughs> party P i will give the value of its column polynomial at alpha j, evaluated at alpha j. Let us denote that value by A i j. So, that value it gives to P j along with the IC signature. And whenever I say it gives the IC signature, remember that we have an instance of ICP running in the background where there will be a generation phase verification phase and the uh, uh, where there will be generation phase and verification phase. Okay. And later on if the signature needs to be revealed and the corresponding revelation phase of the ICP gets invoked. In the same way party PJ evaluates its column polynomial at alpha i and gives the resultant value a j i to p i, but now it also puts its i c signature, it gives its i c signature on that value. Now, once the common points are exchanged, every pair of parties publicly announces the results of pairwise consistency test. So, let us see what party p i does. If it sees that the common point which it receives from p j also lies on its rho polynomial, then it is considered as a positive test in which case it broadcasts an OK message for the jth party. Otherwise, it broadcasts an NOK message for PJ. And similarly, PJ checks whether the common point, supposedly common point which it is receiving from PI lies on PJ's rho polynomial. If it is the case, then it is a positive test in which case an OK message is broadcasted, otherwise an NOK message is broadcasted. So, now let us make few claims regarding what happens after the pairwise consistency tests. So, if the dealer is honest and if some party PI has broadcasted an NOK message against party PJ, then it implies that either the party P i is corrupt or P j is corrupt. Because if the dealer is honest and if both P i and P j are honest, then the, then the polynomials of the ith party and jth party will be pairwise consistent and they will only broadcast an OK message. So, if at all an NOK message is broadcasted by P i and if the dealer is honest and at least one of the two parties P i or P j is corrupt. The second claim is that if the dealer is corrupt and if we consider a pair of honest parties P i P j 
and if their polynomials are not pairwise consistent, then both of them will broadcast an NOK message against each other and this is very trivial to verify. So, now once the OK and NOK messages are made public, let us see what actions are taken by the parties. So, every party who has broadcasted an NOK message, a complaint message against PJ for every such party PI, the following is done. Dealer goes and makes public the dealer's version of the disputed point. So, if at all there is a complaint by PI against PJ, that means PI has checked and verified, PI is complaining that the point on the PJ's column polynomial which is supposed to also lie on PI's row polynomial are not same. So, what dealer is going to now do is dealer is going to make the corresponding point public that is the dealer's version of the disputed point and when I say public that means by broadcasting and in parallel the complainee and the complainant, the complainee here is party PI it makes public its version of the point which it has received in the first round from the dealer and not only its version of the point, but also the dealer's IC signature on that because otherwise how anyone can verify indeed whether PI has received that point during the first round from the dealer. So, to prove that indeed it has received the same point FI of alpha j from the dealer during the first round it makes public the IC signature and when I say makes public the IC signature that means the revelation phase of the corresponding ICP gets invoked. And in parallel PJ makes public its version of the supposedly common point which is going to be a point on its column polynomial and again to convince everyone that whatever point PJ is making public is indeed the one which it has received from the dealer during the first round, it makes public the corresponding IC signature on that point. Okay. So, that means whenever now there is a dispute between I and J, the dealer's version of the point and PI's version of the point and PJ's version of the point are now available in public. And now we will check the following if the signatures revealed by the complainee and complainant are correct, that means they are verified. And if it turns out that either the PI's version or PJ's version does not match the dealer's version, then discard the dealer because dealer is corrupt and take some default value as the dealer's secret. Okay. So, with a very high probability an honest dealer will not be discarded. Why so? Because if the dealer is honest and if at all there is a complaint by PI against PJ, then one of the two parties PI or PJ is corrupt. Then the only way an honest dealer will be discarded is that the corrupt party among PI or PJ is able to forge dealer's signature on an incorrect version of the disputed point which dealer has never given to that corrupt party. But the probability that a corrupt party can forge dealer's an honest dealer's signature is very, very negligible. So, that means if at all a dealer is discarded it is corrupt and because of this pairwise consistency check and the way we are resolving the disputes it will be guaranteed that if a corrupt dealer has distributed inconsistent polynomials then it will be discarded with a very high probability because if the dealer is corrupt and say there were a pair there, there is a pair of parties P i P j who are honest and they have received inconsistent polynomials, then PI would have broadcasted an NOK message. And then when PI makes public the signed value and PJ makes public the signed values, the signatures will be accepted with very high probability because of the non-repudiation property of IC SIG. And once the signatures are verified, everyone will find out that either the dealer's version matches uh, either the dealer's version mismatches PI's version or PJ's version because it cannot be the case that dealer's version matches both PI's version as well as PI, PJ's version because we are considering the case where PI and PJ are honest and FI of alpha j is not equal to GJ of alpha i. 
If this is the case, then the disputed, then the dealer's version of the point can either be the same as PI's version, that is FI of alpha j, or it can be the same as PJ's version. It cannot be same to both PI's version as well as PJ's version, and in that case, at least one of these two conditions will be satisfied and dealer will be discarded. Okay. However, it could be possible that uh, even though P i has broadcasted an NOK message against P j, when the dealer and the complainee and complainant makes their uh, disputed points public, all of the all three of them turns out to be the same. If that is the case, then we simply discard the complaint and what we do in this case is we set the jth secondary share of the ith primary share to be the value which dealer has made public. Okay. So, to summarize if the dealer is not discarded, then with a very high probability it will be guaranteed that the polynomials of all the honest parties plus all the public values which dealer has made public lie on a unique bivariate polynomial. Okay. So, now let us see how the uh, outputs output is computed by individual parties. So, if the dealer is not discarded then every party P i computes its output as follows. So, it takes its primary share to be the constant term of the row polynomial that it has received and the secondary shares are computed as follows. So, there might be some parties P j corresponding to which dealer might have made the dealer's version of the disputed point public and there might be some P j's corresponding to which dealer has not made any point public. So, if we take such parties P j corresponding to which the secondary share S i j has not been set yet, then what P i does is the following. The common point on the P j's column polynomial which P i has received as part of the pairwise consistency check earlier that is set to be the jth secondary share of the ith primary share. And whatever signature P j has provided to P i on that common point that is taken as P j's I c signature on the secondary share S i j. Okay. So, for instance, if P 1 has given the value A j 1 to the party P i, then that value A j 1 is taken as S i 1. In the same way, if say the nth party has given the common point A j n to the party P i, then that is set as S i n and so on and the signatures would have been provided by P 1, P n respectively on those points. But there might be some parties P j corresponding to which the secondary shares has been already set because they have been made public. Okay. So, if there is any such party P j, then what P i now just have to do is it just has to adjust the information which it has received as an intermediary during the corresponding instance of I C P. So, remember when P j would have been uh, doing the pairwise consistency check with P i, P j would have given a common point on P j's column polynomial to P i and P i would have found a dispute with P j and then dealer would have made public S i j and everyone would have set S i j to be the jth secondary share for the ith primary share. That is fine, but we also now need P j's signature on this new value S i j. Okay. So, we cannot afford now to run a fresh instance of I c P and ask P j to give a signature on S i j to P i. Rather what we do is whatever I c signature P j has given on the old version of the common point namely A j i as part of that instance of I c P int int's role would have been played by P i. Okay. So, int would have received some uh, 
authentication information in the form of MAC tags and etc. And other verifiers would have received verification information in the form of uh, MAC keys. So, what the parties now do is they simply adjust their respective information. When I say respective information, I mean int adjust its uh, MAC tags and verifiers adjust their respective MAC keys so that whatever signatures have been given in the earlier instance of ICP, it constitutes now a signature with respect to this new point, new value SH. Okay. And with this the 2D secret sharing with IC signature is done. the 2D secret sharing with IC signature is done. Why so? Because it is indeed the case that the primary shares which are S1, S2, SI, SN which lies on the con which, which are basically the constant term of individual row polynomials, they lie on the Samir secret sharing polynomial f of x which is same as the bivariate polynomial of the dealer evaluated at y equal to 0. So, S i is nothing but f of alpha i. So, we have the primary shares lying on a t degree polynomial and anyhow this secondary shares S i 1, S i 2, S i j, S i n they lie on the t degree by t degree polynomial f i of x okay. and indeed the jth secondary share is held by p j. Of course, p i holds all the secondary shares because it has the ith row polynomial and if we take the individual secondary shares they are IC signed and given to PI okay? because those IC signatures would have been given to PI as part of the consistency check. Right? So, that completes the description of the statistical verifiable secret sharing. Of course, I have not focused here we have not focused here on the optimizing the number of rounds, communication complexity and so on and there are various ways to further optimize the protocols, this protocol in terms of the number of communication rounds and the amount of communication involved. Now, let us discuss a statistically secure protocol for generating a random value. You might be wondering why suddenly we require this protocol. So, remember uh, as part of the statistical polynomial verification protocol, uh, there was a step in that protocol where the parties need to publicly generate a random value which should not be known to the adversary beforehand. So, a very simple way to do that is the following. So, the goal here is to jointly generate a uniformly random element say k from the field. The challenge here is that we cannot designate this task to any single party in the system. We cannot say that say P i is the designated party who should pick a value k and broadcast it because if P i is under the control of the adversary then adversary will be knowing this value k beforehand which we do not want. Okay. And the protocol here is the following instead of asking any single party to pick a random value and make it public we ask each party to pick a random value and instead of making it public rather secret sharing it using an instance of the statistical verifiable secret sharing which we had discussed just now. You might be wondering why cannot we ask every party P i to make its contribution K i public because if we do that then again there is a very nice attack here based on the rushing nature of the adversary. So, what the adversary can do is it can first wait to listen to the contributions of the honest participants and once it listens to the contribution of the honest participants it can pick its own contribution. So, that its own contribution along with the other parties contribution gives a value of adversary's choice which the adversary can easily fix. Again in that case the resultant value will not be uh, a random value. So, that is why we are asking now each individual party to pick a random value and instead of making it public rather secret share, uh, secret share it. So, since the honest parties will be secret sharing their contributions, their input using an instance of VSS adversary 
will have absolutely no idea what exactly uh, are the random values picked by the honest parties. But at the same time adversary will be forced here to pick some value and secret share. Now, once all the values have been secret shared, what we do here is the following. We set the resultant value which is going to be the output of the protocol to be the sum of all the contributions namely the sum of the individual values which have been secret shared by the respective parties. And because of the linearity property of 2D secret sharing with IC signatures this value k can be computed in a non-interactive way by just performing the linear operation on the shares of k1, k2, kn. So, now the value k is secret shared, but we, we would like the value k to be available in a, a public fashion. So, what we do is we run the reconstruction protocol to publicly reconstruct the value k. And now the claim is that this element k is a random element from the field and this simply comes from the fact that the honest parties in the system they pick uniformly random values and the values which have been shared by the honest parties they will be not known when they are secret shared to the adversary because that comes due to the from the privacy property of VSS. And once all the values are fixed and added then only the resultant value k is reconstructed. Now, since the honest parties in the system secret shares random values even if the corrupt parties secret share non-random values we have now a bunch of random values added with a non-random value. So, the resultant sum its probability distribution will be a uniform distribution and it is guaranteed that we have at least one honest party in the system who is going to secret share a random value. Okay. So, with that I end this lecture. So, the verifiable secret sharing protocol which I had discussed is taken from uh, this paper. Of course, there are several optimizations possible for this protocol in terms of number of rounds and communication complexity. Thank you.